bless the Lord at all times. thanks unto the Lord for he is good and his mercy endureth forever. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow Christians and friends, you are tuned to the Hope Covenant Kingdom Fellowship Hour of Virtue Worship. We come to you each and every Sunday at 3 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. We come to the facilities of Facebook Live. Apostle Dr. Michael Body is your host. And if you are enjoying this hour of worship experience, why don't you let us know by phoning us at area code 773-924-2790. scripture for the evening, the 133rd number of the Psalms. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard that went down to the skirts of his garment. And as the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. And the word of God is already blessed, that God be glorified, Satan be horrified, and the word be edified.
Let us bow our way here for a word of prayer. Father God, we come again one more time in thy sight, in thy presence. Thanking you for your many blessings. Thanking you for giving us our opportunity to give your name to praise. We lift up holy hands on this evening because of all the many blessings you have bestowed upon us and because you are mighty God and because you are God all by yourself that you slow to anger, quick to mercy and you let allow your mercy, grace and favor on our lives. So we lift up holy hands. We praise you. We praise your name. Enough, Master, because you are holy. You are righteous. You are everything. You are good. You are a God of supernatural blessings. You are God of favor. So we lift up holy hands to bestow you and to adore you, to praise your name. Because we know that you inhabit all the praises of the saints. So Father, on this evening, we just say thank you for being God. Because you are omnipotent, because you are omniscient, Father, because you were the first, the last, the beginning, the ending. Because you are God. You are the great I am. You are Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisa, Jehovah Rapha, and Jehovah Elohim. So we say thank you for bringing us back another Sunday to give your name the praise, to give your name the glory. You are mighty God. You are God, Master, that just don't fail. So we thank you on this evening, and we ask, Master, that you would show up and show out like you have done time and time again that you would shower down your blessings on these show people, that you would touch each and every one of us as far as our voices can be heard, those of the viewers, Master, wherever they may be, in their homes, in their cars, wherever they are, that you would bless them with supernatural blessings as only you can do it, Father, you said you would not let your word come back void, but accomplish those things it set out to do. So, Father, we lean in, trusting, depending on you, because we know that you are God that fell is not. Take us and hide us behind the cross and yonder's glory. Any way you bless us, we will be satisfied. Send down your power on this evening. Send down your latter rain. Touch somebody right now. By your power, by your might, we realize you can be reckless with us. There's nothing we can do about it. Oh God, give us another chance, Master. Because we know that you're more than a God of a second chance. You are God of many chances. For you have did it time and time again. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, send down your power. We bind Satan on every hand. We cancel every assignment. We rebuke him. We bind him up. We put him under our feet, Father. Have him to know he don't have no power. But you got all power, Master. We ask that you would release right now. That you would bless. That you would deliver, set free, bind up broken hearts. Renew our spirits. Draw us closer. We want to be your children, Master. 
We want you to be able to use us. Master, so use us right now. For your will, Master, for your way. We need you. We need you. We're living in perilous times. We need you. You said, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, you said, I'll hear the land. Now, Father, we ask you to take us and cover us in, with the blood of your son, Jesus. Let us down in the treasure of your love. And then bless us with the blessing we stand in need of. And then, Master, use us this evening that somebody might receive your word. This prayer we offer up in the name of Jesus. We give the honor and the glory. And all the people of God did say, Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Good evening. Good afternoon. We're so uh, gracious and we're so happy to share with you again the Hope Covenant Kingdom Fellowship Virtue Hour Worship. Again, I am Dr. Michael Body, your host. And we're so glad to have you here. Amen. Those of you who have taken out time from your schedule, amen, just stop by, amen, to share with us. And it's just nice to be nice. And if you want friends, you must first show yourself to be friendly. Amen. And so uh, we just thank you for stopping by. Amen. Uh, it just it, it, It's just a beautiful thing. When all of God's children to come together, touching and agreeing on the same thing. He said, I will be a God in the midst. Amen. Thanks be unto God that giveth us the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. God is a good God and he is good all the time and all the time. God is good. And when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. Not only did he save me, but he sanctified me and filled me with the Holy Ghost. And I got a mind to run on to be with the Lord. Amen. If anybody asks you what's the matter with me, just tell them I'm saved. And I'm sanctified and I'm running for my life. Amen. Uh, we're so gracious to have you on this evening. Uh, we're going to ask those of you that would, that you would share this hour of worship experience on your Facebook timeline. Also, that you would subscribe to Dr. Michael D. Body on YouTube. Uh, we would appreciate it. We had 89 subscriptions. We need 20 more, at least 20 more people that would subscribe to Dr. Michael, M-I-K-A-L-D body on YouTube. I need you to tell a friend, tell a family member. We're going to help body get 20 more subscriptions to YouTube. We want you to subscribe again to Dr. Michael D. Body on YouTube. And I know you're going to do just that. I love each and every one of you and ain't nothing you can do about it. Amen. Love is just who I am because God is loved. Amen. Uh, we're going to go into our word. We're going to go into our word and we invite you uh, to share with us. Amen. So we invite your attention to the gospel recorded by St. Luke, a familiar passage of scripture. And uh, let's see, Luke, the 15th chapter, the 15th chapter of Luke, amen. The 11th, let's begin at the 11th verse. And he said, a certain man 
had two sons. And the younger, a man, and the younger of them said to his father, he said, Father, give me the portion of goods that fall it to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey, amen, into a far country. And there wasted his substance with riotous living. Now we're going to drop all the way down to the 17th verse. And it says, and when he came to himself, he said, how many hired servants of my father have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. And we want to just talk about uh, this evening, there's no place like home. There's no place like home. Amen. Uh, so, this particular passage of Scripture is a familiar passage of Scripture, and uh, we are familiar with it as the story of the prodigal son. In Webster's Dictionary, the word prodigal is defined as one who spins or gives uh, lavishly and foolishly. Amen. So it's a lot of prodigal folk. Uh, the second definition is one who has returned after an absence. Amen. All right. Luke 15, 1 and 2, it says, Then drew near to him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man received sinners and eat it with them. If you remember that particular scripture, Jesus replied to their complaints by telling them three parables or three stories. You know, when we came up, they told us a parable is a earthly story with a heavenly Meaning, so Jesus told them three parables. The lost sheep, the lost coin, and last but not least, beloved, the lost son or prodigal son. Well, first of all, the son, he asked for his portion. Now, I'm kind of confused by that because I don't know what the son had done that made him uh, think that he deserved a portion. It's just like uh, our youth today, we think that the world is, uh, they think the world is their oyster. Amen. They want everything, but they don't want to do anything to receive anything. Amen. And if you don't put nothing in, you can't get nothing out. Second, he went to, the scripture says, a far country. Well, let's focus on the far country. Uh, beloved, the far country is a life of willful Sin, amen, by one who simply chooses to live their life separated from God. Amen. And I want to let you know that, that, that you walking on dangerous grounds when you separate yourself from God. Uh, when we choose to leave God out of our lives. And live according to what is right in our own eyes. We are in a far country. Is that all right? Yes, a life apart from God is indeed a far country. 
The far country, amen, is a place of robbery and distortion. It took, uh, uh, it robs you of your fellowship, amen, with God. It distorts the truth. That's what it does. And it makes a lie your truth. See, a lot of, a lot of us living on a lie. And, and, and a lie is our truth. Amen. It robs you of your self-worth. It takes away your dignity. It takes away your pride and your goals and ambitions, your visions and dreams. And most of all, a life now and in eternity with God if you are caught still living in the far country. So you won't be in eternity with God. Uh, once your life here on earth is over. In other words, what I'm saying is everybody talking about heaven ain't going there. Oh, I know y'all know what I'm talking about. So then it goes on to say he wasted his substance the next thing he did he, be, he, he he became broke and hungry that he had when he had money but but that songwriter said people show act funny when they get a little money but then another songwriter said just as soon if I ever get, the, that's what he said, if I ever get my hand on a dollar again, now old, the, 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 us, us, us baby bones know about that. He said, I'm going to hold on to the eagle grins because nobody wants you when you're down and when you're out. Is that all right? No money, no honey, <laughs> no friends, including those who appeared to be... Uh, his friends while he had his money. And long as you got money, you have friends. But I dare you to get uh, uh, broke, get down to your last dime. And so uh, uh, finally, it says he ended up in the hog pen. He looked and he saw the hogs eating the hus and the slop and desired the hus that the hogs did eat. Do I have a witness here? So when we hear or say the words, there's no place like home. The first thing some of us, amen, think about is Dorothy in the Wizard of Oz, clicking her heels uh, of her little red slippers together and saying, there's no place like home. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. And then she was transported back to her little farm in Kansas with her little dog Toto. So a lot of y'all think about that uh, when you hear those words, there's no place like home. We're living in a millennium society where a lot of our children are growing up way too fast. Babies having babies. No discipline in the home. I can just keep Going on and on. Uh, the children nowadays, they want the Jordans, the Nikes. They want the iPhones, the Galaxies. They want tattoos. They want piercing. They got to have their uh, 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 feet and nails done and hair done. And, and, and uh, they got to wake and bake. Instead of getting a good education. They favor, beloveds, the things, amen, 
of the world and not the things of God. You won't find a lot of our millennials in the church. Amen. Because they feel that the church had played out. Amen. It's not about all of that. Amen. Proverbs 22 and 6 lets us know uh, there it says train up. It didn't say train because you train an animal. You train a dog uh, 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 to fetch a stick to roll over, to, to, to play dead. But, but, but it says train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Is that okay? Well, I come to tell you that in Jeremiah 3 and 14, it says that turn all backsliding children. Just call it what it is. Backsliding. We have backslid. We have left our first love. So it says to Jeremiah, Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord, for I am married unto you. Amen. God is married to the backslide. And I will take you, amen, one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. Amen. Well, let us know the uh, that God is, that lets us know God is married to the backslider. Amen. So what am I saying here? It's better to, 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 to have God and not need him than to need him and not have him. Although you're always going to need him. Because if you ever needed the Lord before, you sure do need him now. Yes, we stray away from God, but he is waiting on us to come back home because there's no place like home, regardless of what we may have done. Amen. He will blot out all of our sins and cast them in the sea of, for, come on somebody, of forgetfulness that it will never rise up. On this side. Yes, when we stray uh, away from God, beloveds, uh, we miss God's presence. Uh, we are to want to be in church every Sunday. Look at Psalm, the 91st number of Psalm. Say, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High talking about the church, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. In other words, uh, 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 I will keep you, Keith Pringle said, in perfect peace whose mind is, come on, is stayed on him, on thee. Psalms 27 and 5 say, For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. There ain't nothing like the house of God. In the secret, I like this part, of his tabernacle, in the secret of the church, shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. And when God set you upon the a rock, your haters can't hurt you. Amen. Your enemies can't do you no harm. Uh, we ought to tell somebody, say, I'm still here because God hid me. Beloved, there is nothing like the church, the, the, the place where God hides us. He said, in the secret of his tabernacle, shall he hide me? Well, the definition of, of a, a sanctuary is the worship place. Amen. The church is the worship place. Uh, the church is the place where worship and praise is. The church is where the prayer altar is. Amen. And uh, uh, the tabernacle. 
the tabernacle, the church. Uh, uh, God hides you in the tabernacle. In other words, in the sanctuary where the prayer altar resides. Amen. In the sanctuary, a place of refuge from wildlife where predators are controlled and hunting is illegal. So if we miss one Sunday, the next Sunday is even easier to miss. And before uh, we know it, we are in a backslidden state. It is all right to take a trip. It is all right to, 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 to go away sometime uh, every now and then. It's all right to go on a vacation, but there's no place like home. Amen. Yes, Isaiah 53 and 6 says, All we like sheep, we have gone astray. We have turned everyone uh, to his own way. And the Lord had laid on him the iniquity, amen, of us all. Let's look at Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 and through 30. He says, There come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden. And he said, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. Do I have a witness here? And ye shall find rest in your souls. He said, for my yoke is easy and my burden are light. Well, after we get down in the hall pen of our lives, after the bottom falls out, and when we get down to our wit's end, when we lost all hope, when we feel like throwing in the towel, and some folks even have thoughts of suicide, I heard a songwriter again say that nobody wants you. When you're down and when you're out. But God, who is full of mercy and grace, he's standing with his arm stretched wide open. John 6 and 37 says, All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me, he said, I will not, no otherwise cast out. Well, the scripture says in verse 17, and when he came to himself, amen, wherever you have went in life, even if you have error, even if you have backslidden, if you even turn to drugs, if you turn to alcohol, regardless of what you have done wrong, uh, you ought to do like the prodigal son because the Bible said he came to himself. And he said, how many hired servants of my father have bread enough and to spare? He said, and I perish with hunger. He said, like we ought to say, I will rise and go to my father. And I will say to my father, I have sinned, amen, against heaven and before thee. And he said, I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Just make me one of your high servants. I heard, uh, but his father was standing there. I can imagine with tears in his eyes. And I heard him say, my son was dead, but he is alive. My son was lost, but now he's found. Bring him a robe to put on and put a ring on his finger and kill the fatted lamb because we're going to eat, drink, and be merry. Uh-huh. I want to let you know you might stray away, but God is standing there 
And he's saying, come on, I know you done wrong, but I'm able to forgive you and to cleanse you of all of your sins. I will take your mess and blot it out. Amen. And that it won't come up on this side. Amen. So I come to say to you all on this evening, there's no place like home. Amen. Well, you can't go nowhere else. You could go home. And where's home? Home is where the heart is. Amen. Amen. And the heart is the heart of God. Because he loves us one and all. John 3.16 said, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe it in him shall not perish but have an everlasting life. Amen. If you just lean and trust and depend on the Lord, amen. I come to tell you that he uh, will never leave you nor will he forsake you. Again, he said, cast all your cares upon me. He says, for he cares for you. God bless each and every one of you. We just want to encourage you by just reminding you that there is no place like home. No place can be better than home. Some things can happen in the house that make you want to leave. But when you go, just like we go from church to church, it didn't work right here. But when you get to the other church, you realize the same thing that happened over here happened over there. By way of encouragement. Look to the hill from which come at your help. Remember that all your help come from the Lord. Trust in the Lord and lean not to your own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Amen. In all things, in everything, give thanks for this is the will of God concerning you. I come to tell you, he won't fail. Amen. Amen. He is married to the backslider. So if you stray away, God will be standing there saying, come on, back home. Because there is no place, amen, no place like home. I want to thank each and every one of you all for uh, tuning in and sharing with us. We invite you back at 3 o'clock this time next week, 3 o'clock for our virtue hour of worship. Uh, I Again, I'm your host, Dr. Michael Body Apostle Primus Inter Perez of Hope Covenant Kingdom Fellowship uh, Incorporated. Amen. Also, we invite you. Amen. We have a special presentation on Wednesday on our Hour of Empowerment emanating from Christ Family Network Radio TV. Amen. We we have special guests in person of Dr. Andrew Gibson. Amen. Uh, the proud pastor of Vernon Baptist Church. Uh, we invite you to tune in, amen, again, for the Hour of Empowerment with Dr. Michael Body. We want to thank you for tuning in. I want to say that God loves you and ain't nothing that you can do about it. And I love you too. <laughs>
like praising him.